Today we're going to be looking at some handy tips in Tinkercad which could help you up your 3D modeling game. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, it's Andy with Inland Filament here back at the Maker Lab at Micro Center. I know a lot of you out there have bought printers and have been using files that are on the internet and have been looking for a way to make your own files. Tinkercad's a great way to do that. In this video, we'll take a look at a couple of tips that you might not know about yet when using Tinkercad. Let's get started. For this first tip, let's look at copying and pasting between models. Let's say you've worked really hard on something in Tinkercad and want to take a portion of that into another model. In this instance, I'm going to take a part from something I previously made and simply copy and paste it into another Tinkercad project in this other tab. This can be extremely useful when you want to revive something from a previous project and use it in another without having to recreate it or duplicate the entire file and remove all of the unwanted items. For our next tip, we'll be taking a look at the inspector window. While Tinkercad tends to be on the simpler side, it does often offer some options for objects that could be useful. Take the cylinder object for instance. You may be thinking that by default the resolution is a bit coarse and it looks more like a polygon with many sides. Increasing the side count can smooth it out and make the outer edge look more like a traditional cylinder. No matter what shape, or what feature you're using, always check the inspector window for additional options that might be useful. In our third tip, we'll be taking a flat scalable vector graphic or SVG file that can be created in another program such as Adobe Illustrator or even found on the web and importing it so that we can give it more depth. Click on the import button and find the file that you saved and import. If you're confident the size is right, you can leave things alone or you can scale it during the import. Once it's in, you can always use the ruler tool to make sure it's exactly the size you want or use the handles to resize it. The benefit of this is that you can then add that object to other parts or likewise modify it using pre-existing shapes. Our next tip allows you to incorporate custom fonts into your project. While the text tool is alright, it's a bit limiting when it comes to font options. Following the previous tip, in Adobe Illustrator or another vector graphic program, you can create the type you want, save it as an SVG, and then import it just like we did in the last tip. It's a bit of a workaround, but still a useful way to approach the limiting fonts of the text tool. Our final tip helps you hide and show shapes. As your model gets more and more complex, you may find it difficult to get to parts of your model that may be blocked by other shapes. One way to deal with this is using the hide and show tools. By selecting the object in your project that is in the way and clicking on the light bulb icon in the inspector panel, you'll be able to temporarily hide the object so you can get to the object you're looking to work on. To see the object again, you'll need to click on the Show All light bulb located up here. This will unhide any hidden objects so you can see all parts of your entire model once again. Alright, we hope these tips help you level up your 3D modeling game. And if you have any tips that you'd like to share with the community, please leave them in the comments below. As always, make sure to follow Inland Filament and Micro Center on social media. We'll see you next time in the Maker Lab at Micro Center.